usually not a New Year's goals kind of girl, except for weight loss. I definitely think that I'm gonna lose weight every single year. That being said, I do always love a fresh start, whether it's a new week, a new month, or an entire new year. If you're new here, I'm Christina, and I'm changing my content in 2023 from mostly cleaning videos. I'll be sharing a lot of intentional living videos. Stay tuned until the end of this video for my top tip on how to not just set goals this year, but to actually accomplish your goals in 2023. Every year that passes, I realize more and more how much my mental health is affected by my physical environment. If I wake up in a messy home, I wake up stressed and overwhelmed. Before anything bad even happens in my day, I'm already stressed out. I keep wondering why I'm feeling this way. And then it dawns on me that maybe it has something to do with the sink that's overflowing with dishes or that big pile of laundry on the couch. Meanwhile, I have hungry kids clamoring for breakfast and I'm trying to make them something to eat all while working around this big mess and then adding to that mess with more dirty dishes. My piece of advice for resetting for the new year in 2023 is to get into the habit of having an evening routine. In the past, I've always put most of the importance on the morning routine, and I do think that's important, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but a good evening routine really sets you up for success with your morning routine. Your evening routine can be as simple as a 15 minute tidy every evening after you put your kids to bed. Or even better, do it right after dinner and get the entire family involved. I know lots of homemakers who swear by waking up to an empty sink. Developing the habit in 2023 of making sure the sink is always empty at the end of the night will not only help you to sleep better at the end of the day, because you won't be thinking about the pile of dishes that you gotta do, but it also goes a long way towards starting the next day off right. And speaking of morning routines, let's go ahead and talk about it. Whether you realize it or not, you actually already have a morning routine. This is simply what you do with the first part of your day. But if you don't have an intentional morning routine, you may be doing things without even realizing how they're really affecting your day. So I want you to ask yourself, what are you doing when you first wake up in the morning? Do you grab your phone and start scrolling before your feet even hit the floor? Stop it, stop doing that. Sometimes what you don't do is just as important as what you do, 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 do. Leave the technology and all the gloomy news for at least a little bit later in the day. Start your morning off with some quiet, technology-free time, a warm drink, and maybe just take a few minutes for gratitude. This doesn't have to be some type of elaborate journaling. Just taking a few minutes to think about how blessed you truly are is enough to make a huge difference in your mood. And just as a little bonus tip for all you mamas out there, wake up before your kids. I know this is hard to do when you're in the newborn stage and you're sleep deprived, but if you're past that stage and you have toddlers or older kids, getting up before your kids can really change your entire day. I've been doing this for the last few years and has really made such a big difference. This doesn't have to be some big like, let's get all this stuff done before our kids wake up, which if you're struggling to get things done in your day, that is one of my favorite hacks for that. But this can simply be enjoying a cup of coffee, having some alone time with the Lord, and just gathering yourself together before the chaos of the day starts, just drinking your coffee in silence before it gets cold. That's the good stuff in life. If you're really not a morning person and you wanna write this tip off, before you do, just try getting up 15 minutes earlier to start. If this isn't something you're already doing, you'll probably be shocked at what a difference this small change can make in your mood for the rest of the day. I can tell you guys, when I first started doing this, I was still really tired and lacking energy, but I just made myself do it anyway, and I started to get this sense of refreshment of just having a few minutes alone to myself, even if I was tired, even if in the beginning I did fall back asleep sometimes because I was still pretty energy deprived when I started doing this, but it really made such a difference in my mood for the rest of the day. And sometimes I did get things done. Sometimes I literally just sat there with a cup of coffee in silence and again, try it out. When it comes to resetting for a new year, I think it's only natural to also think about the space you're living in. Resetting your home can be really powerful and have a trickle down effect into every other part of your life. You can start by simply decluttering one specific space in your home. And my personal advice would be to start in your closet with decluttering your clothes first. If you've watched any of my recent videos, you know this is something I've done twice in the last several months. And I plan to be even more ruthless in the new year and paring down my clothes. I have less than half of what I had before and I still don't even wear half of that. It's still a work in progress. Go at your own pace, but I have 
already noticed that it's really freeing to me to walk into my closet and see all the empty space. Most of us don't realize how much mental space it takes up just figuring out what to wear in the morning when you have to wade through piles and piles of clothes that just really don't fit you. Having only clothes that fit in my closet is one of my life goals for 2023. I don't know if that's sad or not, but that's the truth. When we hold on to clothes that don't fit us because we're thinking that one day we're gonna fit back into them, what we don't realize is that those clothes are actually screaming at us about how we're not good enough. Every single time we walk into our closet to get dressed, we're already starting our day out in this negative headspace surrounded by all those rude clothes. As I keep reminding myself, our clothes are made to fit our bodies and not our bodies to fit our clothes. This is the way I'm going to be viewing my wardrobe in 2023. If it doesn't fit or I'm constantly tugging on it, trying to pull it down, or I just don't feel great when I wear it, the item has to go. Once you have your closet taken care of, move on to another area in your home that needs work. I personally prefer to get my home fully decluttered at the end of the year because you have so much new things coming into your house around Christmas time. But if you didn't start this at the end of 2022, the new year is the perfect time to get your entire home in order. Go ahead and take all that it's a new year enthusiasm and put it to good use. You can take it in baby steps if you need to. It's really okay for this to take time, but try to set some type of goal to keep yourself accountable. Like setting a goal of doing one new area per week or one room a month, whatever it is that you have bandwidth for in your life right now, everybody has a different levels that they can handle in the moment. So don't make this something where you're beating yourself up. Just make a list of everything you need to get done around your house and make some type of plan to start tackling it. It's really as simple as that. You don't have to be down on yourself about how bad you've let your house get or how long it's going to take. Just make a list and make a plan. So we are moving in about five to six months to our new house and that new start has coincided with a new year for me. And so I am so fired up to get rid of as much stuff as I need to. So leave me a comment down below if you want me to help you get rid of your stuff because I'm all about it right now. Because after all, less stuff means less the pack. Another area that I feel many of us could use a good old reset in 2023 has to do with our time. In this day and age, most of us probably spend more time than we should on things that aren't serving us like social media. Take a good hard look at how much time you're spending on social media, but also who you are following and how those accounts make you feel. If you're following a bunch of perfect bodies on Instagram and that motivates you to go to the gym, great. But if those accounts actually make you feel feel down, you start talking negative to yourself, and you just feel worse about yourself every time after you look at the posts from those accounts, unfollow them. If you find that any of the accounts that you follow leave you feeling less than uplifted and encouraged, unfollow them. And don't forget to evaluate the amount of time you spend scrolling. I seriously had to delete Pinterest off my phone for a while because I was spending way too much time planning my dream house and my dream life and all the dream things I was gonna do and not enough time actually working towards those goals. Set some specific parameters for when and how long you're gonna be on social media. If you find that you're always scrolling on your phone during family dinners, physically leave your phone in the other room. If you can't stop from picking it up, out of sight, out of mind. At least until you break the habit of just reaching for your phone and not even realizing that you're doing it. Several years ago, I felt the Lord speaking to my heart about being distracted. I turned off all the notification on my phone except for texts and phone calls. And you know what? I really didn't miss it. And then again, just a few months ago, I realized I was still just picking up my phone randomly for no apparent reason, like some kind of weird tick. And my heart is truly to be a present wife and mother. So I went a step further and I started leaving my phone on the bedside table during my mornings with my girls and my evenings with my husband. And I went from being the girl who had notifications going off on her phone every five seconds to having to get up and walk into the other room if I wanted to pick up my phone. I will say I was a little miffed at my husband because it took him about three weeks to notice the great good deeds that I was doing by not being on my phone. I actually had to say something to him. I'm like, you didn't notice? Life is truly too short to waste your time scrolling and a lot of what you see on Instagram is fake anyway, right? Or at least highly edited. <laughs> So this brings us to the next area to reset for 2023, and that is your social calendar and your time management systems in general. Where are you spending your time? Do you feel like you 
you wasted a lot of time this past year on things that really didn't matter? Going beyond those little daily time wasters like scrolling social media and looking deeper into your family's schedule, are your kids in like a thousand different extracurriculars? Do you feel like a chauffeur? Are you always running from one place to the next, eating dinner in your car most nights? Is that what you want for 2023? Or do you dream of eating dinner around the table as a family most nights? Start your year off with a plan. Have a family meeting to get on the same page for the next year and set a limit for how many activities each family member can say yes to in a particular season. My kids are not in sports yet. This is something we're definitely going to be evaluating before we ever get to that point, but it's a pain point I've seen for a lot of families, so I thought it was an important one to bring up. Have you made enough time for your loved ones? Make a plan for how often you're going to visit your parents or your grandparents, or if you're like me and your family's long distance, make a plan for how often you're going to call them. Maybe every Friday at 10 o'clock you give your mom a call instead of looking back and realizing you haven't talked to her in a month. Reset for 2023 by not just setting goals, but also creating new systems for how you plan to accomplish that goal. Some wise person once said, if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. And I have always found that to be so true. So for my top tip that I teased at the beginning of the video, this year, instead of just setting goals, make an actual plan on how you're going to accomplish them. So for example, if one of your goals is to spend less time on your phone, you can't just say, I'm gonna spend less time on my phone in 2023. You actually have to set an actual parameter around that. Your goals have to be specific and have an actual action plan attached to them if you're ever gonna accomplish any of them. So how how long is less time and how are you going to ensure you stick to that and you don't just fall back into your old habits come February? If you have an iPhone, there is a little widget on your phone that shows you how long you're spending on your phone each day and if you've seen it, you've probably been embarrassed. I mean, maybe that's just me projecting, but set that to your favorites is what I did. And then you decide what your limit is to each day. Maybe your daily screen time is like eight hours a day. That sounds shocking, but, and I am really truly embarrassed to say it, but I'm gonna be vulnerable with you guys. That was mine. Now I'm gonna make an excuse here. I know it's an excuse, I'm gonna make it anyway. A lot of it was the fact that I was listening to a podcast or I had YouTube playing or just some noise playing in the background during my day when I was washing dishes, doing laundry, whatever. But seeing that number made me realize enough was enough and and so I cut it down to less than two hours a day overnight. That may still sound like a lot to some people. That may sound like ripping off a Band-Aid kind of thing. And the fact that I did that overnight, well, that's, I mean, that's why I was so shocked that my husband didn't notice sooner, but you know, he wasn't there for most of it. It was probably 80%, like I said, me watching stuff and listening to stuff while I was cleaning house and stuff like that. You can decide what you wanna do. Do you wanna cut your screen time in half? Do you wanna set a set limit every day? Do you wanna just put limits on certain portions of your screen time? It shows you little blocks for social media versus phone calls and texts and all of that stuff. And you could just set limits on individual things or just limits as a whole. There's really a million different ways you can do it. Whatever your goal is, just make sure that you write it down and that you hold yourself accountable. Maybe even tack it up on the fridge so your husband knows how well you're doing it and he can compliment you. What? My love language is words of affirmation. If your goal is to wake up an hour before your kids each day, but you're not a morning person, just set a goal for waking up 15 minutes early the first week week and then increasing it to 30 minutes the next week until you reach your goal. Actually achieving your goals this year does not have to be some miserable thing that you're dreading. <laughs> this is something I'm still currently learning, but small actions over time lead to big results. That brings us to the final one, which I actually think is the most important, and that is to reset your mind in 2023. Research shows that the average person, this includes men and women, speak about 16,000 words per day and that someone who is very talkative averages about 50 thousand words per day. Interestingly enough, this research found that an average woman does not speak more than the average man. Now that probably just made some of y'all doubt the credibility of the study, but it's also interesting to note that the experts say that 80% of all talk is self-talk. So if you're going by this research, the average person actually speaks 64,000 words to themselves. And that means if you're one of those talkative people, you're speaking up to 200,000 words 
words just to yourself. Or, you know, you might could assume the talkative people are really more talkative because they're not keeping much to themselves. So maybe their self-talk is not as bad, but regardless, 64,000 words is a lot of words. Now we may be careful in the things we say out loud. Honestly, a lot of people probably aren't. <laughs> as we've always been told, death and life is in the power of the tongue. And some people are better at keeping their tongue in check than others. How many of us really pay attention to our thoughts? God's word tells us in Matthew that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what you're saying out loud is directly related to what is in your heart. And what is in your heart is directly related to the things that you spend your time thinking about. I don't know about you guys, but I spent most of my teens and young 20s saying things without thinking and having to apologize. And I can honestly say that the only regrets I have in my life are things that I have said. I felt that things would just slip out and maybe didn't have much thought put into it. And when I started to try to tame my tongue, I realized that it all starts with my thought life. And honestly, my point in this video is not even so much what we say to others or what we think about others, but what we actually say to ourselves. When you spend all day telling yourself how much you hate doing the laundry, guilty. <laughs> You'll build something that really is simple up into this huge mountain in your life. When you tell yourself that you have a slow metabolism and you can't lose the weight no matter how hard you work, it becomes really hard. And another mountain that you struggle to climb guilty again. Many of us say things to ourselves that we would never say to a friend. We tell ourselves a story about ourselves that simply isn't true. And when this happens year over year, we begin to subconsciously make decisions that start to make the story true. I have no friends and nobody likes me anyway, so why even go to the party? They only invited me over because I heard them talking about it and they felt like they had to. Have you ever said those kinds of things to yourself and then started to wonder why you never got invites to party? It's because you were invited three times and you never came. So now they're telling themselves a story about how you must not like them. Now this might seem like a silly example to you guys. I mean, it really does happen to some people. I've seen it in real life, so it's not all that far fetched, but I thought it was a great example of how quickly one rogue thought can change the direction of your life if you allow yourself to dwell on it. We're supposed to take every thought captive and Think on the things that are true, lovely, honest, and just. This is something I've really started to pay a lot of attention to the last few months. I knew that I said mean things to myself. I knew I was hard on myself. My husband tells me all the time I'm too hard on myself. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. But I didn't realize how bad it really was. Paying attention to your thoughts is the first step. And then after that, you can start to take action. The next time you catch yourself criticizing your belly, stop and remind yourself about the amazing children that belly grew and nourished. Catch every negative thought and replace it with something positive. It's not about living in denial about the pounds we have to lose or things we're failing at that we need to work on. It's about reminding yourself that you're working hard to change those things and giving yourself grace to grow. If you couldn't tell, I was speaking directly to myself with a lot of this. I don't think this is something we ever get perfect at. It's a lifelong journey, but I do think that if we begin to focus on our thoughts more and change that, this is one area that can really change your entire life. I'm super excited for 2023 and I'm so excited to take y'all along with me. Stay tuned and while you're at it, make sure you are subscribed with your notification bell turned on. And before you go, check out this video right here.